What's up everyone and welcome back. I am your host AR Comics and today I'm going to be going over my top 10 list for new comic book day May 19th 2021. There were a ton of awesome books that came out this week. I ended up picking up a total of 12 different ones so two of them did not make the cut but before I get started on this list if you are new to the channel I drop weekly comic book content that will keep you up to date on all the latest releases. So if that sounds like something you do not want to miss out on make sure you hit the subscribe button down low and the little bell to get notified every time I drop new content you won't regret it and now without further ado let's get started on this top 10 list so I hope you all had a fantastic new comic book day and you were able to enjoy all of the issues you picked up this week. I was definitely a little bit pickier this week. I picked up a total of 12 different issues like I was saying before. I ended up not grabbing Heroes Reborn issue number 3 or the new Shang-Chi series. When I got to my shop, I saw a couple issues on the shelf that I didn't think I was going to be able to pick up. So when I saw them, I definitely had to snag them. And with these two issues, I actually did really enjoy them. And as always, I'm going to try to keep this as spoiler free as possible. But you guys already know, sometimes spoilers do happen. So with these first two issues, they are in no particular order. And like I said, I did actually really enjoy them. This week was just so awesome with the other books. So this first one I'm going to be going over is Images, Ultra Mega, issue number three, and this is cover A. So this series has definitely grown on me. I don't think it's nearly as good as it was in that first issue. I just really liked how it was presented to us. I really thought that's the direction they were going to be going with it. But then when we hit that ending, I thought, all right, well, we're going to see where the next issue goes. And they've continued off that second issue. I still love the artwork. I love how just gorgeous gory and graphic and the action. I just think it's a really cool thing that they've got going on. But for those reasons, still didn't make the cut. And I think there's only one or two more issues coming out for this series. So moving on to the next one, we've got DC's Nightwing issue number 80. Same thing. This is cover A for it. And this one picked up pretty much right where the last one left off. I really did enjoy this one. There was more detective work going on with it. Not a whole lot of action. But in the description, it did say that this was going to be the first full appearance of the new villain. And in my opinion, it was more of a cameo he did pop up at the very end kind of like he did with the last one we just got to see more of what he looks like but for those reasons I did really enjoy it still just didn't make the list so next up let's talk about the real top 10 list all right, so to kick this list off this week, we've got coming in at number 10, this is Images, Stillwater, issue number 7, and this is cover A, and for those of you reading this, this is also a brand new arc, and they started this one off with a bang. I thought this issue was so cool, there was a ton of action. Admittedly, I kind of forgot what really happened in the last issue, like some of the smaller details, because it's been so long since it actually came out, so I had to reread the last issue, and after I did that, it led into it a whole lot better, but in my opinion, I feel like overall this series has definitely been more of a slow burn and I just don't really know the direction they can really go with this I have faith in Chip Zdarsky he's really killing it on everything he's writing right now but they're just confined to this little town at some point they have to expand from it and that kind of leads into how the issue ended so this is going to be a little bit of a spoiler but seriously how did nobody see this little tree town forest up in the sky like this little kid brought him there and he's like all right we've got this safe place if it's been there, how has nobody known it's there? And even if they do know it's there, won't you think that they're going to be looking for them there? Just my opinion. I still really like this issue. I've got faith in Chips at Arsky, and I know it's going to pick back up. But for those reasons, we've got Stillwater issue number seven coming in at number 10. And next up, we've got coming in at number nine this week. This is Images, Stray Dogs, issue number four. This is cover A, and for those of you reading this, we've only got one issue left of this series, and I'm going to be really bummed when this one ends. And I'm also jealous of everyone that's been getting those cover B horror movie variants. I just think they're so cool. But with this issue, it picks up right where the last one left off, and these dogs are just slowly coming to the realization one by one that this guy actually is a murderer, and he's been killing off all of their previous owners, and that's why they all live with each other. I think they're going to do a great job wrapping this one up, too. I'm really looking forward to seeing where they go with this. Are the dogs going to escape? Are they going to band together and kind of attack this guy? I don't know, but I'm really looking forward to it. I highly suggest checking this series out. It's only going to be a five issue mini run, but for those reasons, coming in at number nine, we have Stray Dogs issue number four. Next up on my list, we've got coming in at number eight this week. This is Marvel's Fantastic Four Life Story, the 60s, issue number one, and this is cover A. And this is an absolute must read if you're a fan of Chip Zdarsky's Spider Man life story or just the Fantastic Four in general. I think they did such a great job with this one. We got to see basically an origin story of the Fantastic Four, who they were before they became the superheroes, and then once they became the superheroes, how they dealt with the powers, how they dealt with each other, and then they just showed them throughout the years of the 60s. I thought it was so cool. They brought Galactus into it. They brought some other villains into it as well. I don't want to spoil a whole lot of it. But I wasn't even initially planning on picking this one up. I love 
love Chip Zdarsky's Spider-Man life story, but I'm not the biggest of Fantastic Four fans, but Buck from New World Comics made the recommendation, and I definitely had to pick it up. So thank you so much for that recommendation. And if you are ever in Oklahoma City, make sure you check by their shop because they're a great group of dudes, and they have such an awesome selection to go through. But for those reasons, we have the Fantastic Four life story coming in at number eight. Next ball on my list, we've got coming in at number seven this week. This is Images, The Scumbag. Issue number eight, this is cover A. And honestly, there's not much I can't say that I haven't already said about this series. As far as the artwork goes, I thought this issue was all right. I talk about it all the time. Some issues I really like, some issues I don't, because the artist changes all the time. And as far as the story goes, it's the same as every other issue. We have Ernie. He's a scumbag. And we've got somebody bad trying to coerce him into doing bad things so he can get what he wants, whether it's drugs, alcohol, Hall women, he's going to do it because he's the scumbag. But with this issue, we actually get some backstory on Ernie and his partner Mary, and I thought that was really cool. It was a different dynamic that I really wasn't expecting from this issue. We got to see both of their upbringings, kind of their family, and what led them to be the way that they are right now, and I really like that. So I'm really looking forward to the next upcoming issues for this one. This one kind of brought some new life into the series to me. I was getting a little burned out reading the same thing every single time. I still enjoyed it, but you know, I'd like a little bit of a switch up, and that was this one. So for those reasons, kind Coming in at number seven. Next up on my list, we've got coming in at number six this week. This is DC's brand new one, Wonder Girl, issue number one. This is cover A, and I'm so happy I was able to grab a copy this week for new comic book day. Yara Floor is such a badass. So with this issue, I love the story. I thought the artwork was incredible, the way they set the story up, and even delivered it. I think overall they did such a great job with it. So with this issue, we got to see some traumatic events that happened early in her life, and then from there, it kind of brought us to the present. We got to see some other badass things that she did, and then from there, we got to see some other main characters kind of dealing with her presence. They kind of all communicated with each other and they were like, I don't know if they were scared of her or they were just worried about her presence, but they're coming together to try to stop her. And I'm really looking forward to seeing where they go with this story. I think DC is about to have a home run with Wonder Girl. So for those reasons, we've got Wonder Girl issue number one coming in at number six. And now we're down to the top five issues of the week. We've got coming in at number five this week. This is AWA's Redemption, issue number four. And we only have one issue left of the series. I'm definitely going to be upset when this one ends. I am loving it so far. AWA's got a great series right here. So with this one, I was a little unsure with how they were going to handle it. I knew it was a setup for a big battle. And I thought this one was kind of going to be maybe a part one of a big battle and then finish it up in the fifth issue and kind of go from there. And, you know, I knew they were going to have a good ending for this one. But this one took a different route, and it was so unexpected, and it was so good in my opinion. So with this one, we actually got more of a backstory on The Butcher. I don't want to spoil everything because you definitely need to read this one for yourself. But we kind of got to see her explain herself instead of other people always talking about all these different rumors about her saying, oh, she's this, she's killed all these people, she's destroyed this. And I mean, don't get it twisted, she's definitely killed a ton of people. But she's not nearly the person everyone's making her out to be. So definitely check this one out. But we We've got coming in at number five, Redemption, issue number four. And next up, we've got coming in at number four this week. This is Marvel's The Immortal Hulk, Time of Monsters, issue number one. This is cover A, and this is just a one-shot, but I'm sticking to it. These one-shots have been so much better than the actual main series have been. This is exactly what I want out of The Immortal Hulk. It's just a horror story, and I loved it. So before I even get started on this story, the artwork itself was absolutely incredible. There were so many times I was reading what was on the page, and I got caught looking at the art, and then I start rereading, and I get lost in the artwork again. This art was telling a story of its own and it was just fantastic. But as far as the issue itself goes, it dates back way back in the day. We've got some tribes and they're worshiping. I believe they called it the mother seed and times are tough there. They don't really have anything that's life substantial for them and they're just believing in this gamma radiated mother seed. Other things happen from there. A tribesman gets infected with this gamma seed and just all hell breaks loose. I can't even spoil anything else. This is an absolute must read if you're an Immortal Hulk fan. I highly suggest checking this one out. So for those reasons, we've got the Immortal Hulk, Time of Monsters, coming in at number four. 
Next up on my list, we've got coming in at number three this week. This is Images, Radiant Black, issue number four. This is cover A, and this is the exact issue that I thought issue number three was going to be. So when I reviewed issue number three, I thought it was going to be a lot of training. He was going to figure out how to use his powers and maybe a little bit of action. But instead, we got to see some character development. It took it a little bit slower, and I did really like it. But this issue number four was what I needed. There was so much action. He was figuring out how to be a better Radiant Black superhero. But once we got into the meat of the issue... All it was was action, there was fighting, the main villain showed up, and it was pretty sweet. But then, we got a massive, massive plot twist at the very end, and I cannot wait to see where they go with issue number 5. I highly suggest checking out this series, it has been so good so far. So we have, for those reasons, Radiant Black, issue number 4, coming in at number 3 this week. And here we go, we're down to the top two issues of the week we have coming in at number two from Boom Studios, The Many Deaths of Lila Star. Issue number two, this is cover A, and Ram V is telling an incredible story with this one. If you're in it for action and fighting, that is definitely not this series, but man, I don't even know where to begin with this without spoiling most of the story. But we've got Death still, she's taken over Lila Star's body, but we get such a moral story in this one. She meets up with this crow, and this crow basically, hey, you want to go to a funeral and while that's all happening the story of Darius the little boy that she's supposed to kill you see kind of what's going on in his life and it was a plot twist. It was a mind-blown story, and I'm loving everything about this series so far. Boom Studios has an absolute hit with this one. Please check this one out, especially because it's only two issues deep, but we have coming in at number two, The Many Deaths of Lila Star, issue number two. And this is it, my top read of the week coming in at number one. This is a very last second pickup, and I'm so happy I grabbed it. We've got Red Room, issue number one. This is cover A, and this was an oversized 64-page issue with, I believe, a $6.99 price tag. Absolutely worth the pickup. So with this issue, though... It is in black and white, so if you're not a black and white fan as a reader, definitely avoid this one. It's very graphic, very gory, very mature, so if you're not interested in that either, definitely move on to the end of the video. But man, so as the title says, Red Room, it's basically just a snuff film. It's got the dark web, and it's just these people who have a live stream that kill people on it. And we see all these different people in here, how they interact with each other, and it was just such a great story told by Ed Pisker. If you're interested in stuff like this, or if you think you might be, let's talk about this one a little bit more down low in the description, because that's kind of the gist of this story. You just definitely have to read it for yourself. But we've got Red Room issue number one coming in at number one. Thank you so much for all the recommendations for this one. So what do you guys think of this week's new comic book day? So many awesome issues came out this week. Let me know down low in the comment section which ones I missed out on and which ones you loved the most this week. And thank you for watching this video. If you did enjoy it, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. And if you don't want to miss out on any of my upcoming content, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down low and the little bell to get notified. Every time I drop new content, you won't regret it. And I've got two more videos sitting off to the side here with more of my comic book content. Click on one of those and I'll see you in the next one. Have a great day.